Okay, here's my Dell Precision 450. Um, she's uh, basically, they call it the Workstation 450. She's basically a server. So she's designed to be. I took the motherboard out. I'm going to clean all of this. Um, this is the backing plate that's on the bottom. And here's the motherboard. Uh, now she's got some bad caps. They they popped, and you can kind of see here some residue spilling out. And if you look closely at the top, you see that it's bubbled a little. And then these here have done the same. The rest of them look good. The rest of the caps look okay, but these here, pretty much uh, certain, uh, advan all it, all have uh, degrees of decaying, some worse than others. But this one, and a few of these here, so I'm going to change all of this particular model, which there's 10 of these total on the board. So I've already got 10 ordered, and I'm taking everything off, cleaning, I'm going to clean the board thoroughly. Um, but I'm not going to wait because I have magic in these hands. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to throw a little magic down right now. And you're all going to be thoroughly impressed. I know that you are. Um, at my magic. The case is in pretty bad shape. This is what the front of it looks like. Okay. So are you ready for my magic? So... Basically, here she is, as you can see, broken and empty. Shazam! Boom! Completed. Cleaned. All the wires are set up. You look inside here. You see beautifulness. Inside here, the two Xeon 2.4 gig processors. Um, she's populated with two 30 gig SCSIs. Yeah, I fully, when I bought this, um, it was running my graphics studio. So, I mean, I got the best that I could get. That's a SCSI drive, um, SCSI controller, and these are two 30 gig SCSIs. There's the stock floppy, but Originally it came with a CD. I put a DVD rewriter in it. At the time it was pretty much all they had. Oh, and then, uh, it originally came with a gig of RAM. Right now she's populated with four gigs of RAM. Um, and uh, do I have the video card handy? Because the video card that, was with, that originally came with it, boy, I wish I would have remembered that and kept that handy. I have to show it in a later video because I don't see it right now. Uh, it was really cool. It was the first Fire GL. It was actually built in Ireland. Um, I mean, it was a big bulky thing. And I usually keep all those things around. Hang on while I look for it. Now I'm, I'm on a quest. I found it. So this was the original, first of the, at this time this was just a rendering beast. I mean, we're talking about one of the first uh, ATI Fire GLs ever. This is the Fire GL1. It's actually uh, made in Ireland. I don't know if you can see that right there. Let's see if I can get close. Yeah, it was actually made in Ireland. Uh, at the time, she was a screamer. Uh, just, just, just a great uh, <laughs> place for it. It looks like 3D glasses. I mean, you can see that. Interesting. Uh, but anyway, she just, and the card still works. Um, I'm going to probably put it in something just because it's cool. Uh, right now, I'm running a Fire GL. Uh, X2, which is like the uh, third series. Uh, she is capable of running... Uh, she's capable of cross-firing within her own card. Even though it, it she, she basically runs like a two CPU sys video card. You know, honestly, I don't really know. 
the complete details on this card. I know that it is quite a bit faster than the stock Fire GL, so I decided to add that. Um, but pretty much everything else is the same. I put in um, some Firewire and uh, USB 2s. Um, and then, of course, this came, I, I ordered it with the Adaptech SCSI controller. And originally came with two 18 gig hard drives. I replaced them with the faster 30 gigs and, of course, the DVD. So I've got it all connected. I've got all the caps replaced. Let's, uh, as, uh, as it's once said, uh, from one of my favorite, uh, YouTube channels, uh, UXW Bill, I believe. Smoke test coming up. Let's uh, see if I can pan to the monitor. Uh, okay, let's see what we got. Looks like we got power. And it's not part. Oh, looks like we got a screen of some sort. And look at that. Precision Workstation 450. Yeah, baby. Isn't that beautiful? And she's one running, uh, originally when I bought it, I remember distinctly. It was Windows 98, man. That's all you had. Um, she's running quite a bit more than that now. I mean, I didn't take it up any higher than Windows XP. Uh... But she still has the original software on it that we use when we design when we were designing in the great and you know that was I'll tell you that company was a lot of fun. We were doing a lot of CAD work, a lot of designing for customers, a lot of we were we were printing huge banners, which was I mean that it just was a it was a it was a party every day. You know, uh our graphic artists used to listen to music. MP3s are like nuts back then. Uh, so, I mean, the, uh, the warehouse that I owned was separated. There was a large air conditioning, air conditioned room in the front of the building. That was our lab where all our technicians did all their work, undisturbed work in totally beautifully air conditioned controlled environment. And we had, uh, one time we probably had four, maybe five 40, 40 inch wide format printers. Uh, and, uh, we, when, and they're funny, they used to shake when they printed, they just did this weird shake. Anyone who knows about those Epson wide format printers, the Epson 9,000, 9,500s, they used to shake. Boy, it's taking a long time to boot, isn't it? Well, oh, we got an arrow. We got a mouse pointer. That's good. We are in. Anyway, we used to call it the money dance when we'd send uh, prints to those printers. And um, a lot of times what we would do is we would, uh, artists would come in and they would want their art reproduced on canvas and they wanted archival and they wanted it to be perfect. And so we had a really nice scanner connected to this print, this computer. And, uh, oh, in my excitement, I did not, I did not plug in the keyboard. So let me pause real quick and fix that. I'll be right back. Okay, I'm pretty sure this is where we were when I left off. Um, yes, I did forget to plug in the keyboard. Try to figure out that password, a dairy. It's stupid. And uh, wow, looks like everything is working. I mean, it's I mean, taking a long time to boot. I don't remember it ever taking this long. Beautiful. It's a great thing about um, putting all the stuff back in. You don't have to update drivers or anything. I mean, it just all, it's like it remembers right where it left off. Wow, looks like it's 
doing what it needs. You know, and it's funny too because this is a 2003, I think, is when I bought this. Uh, so what is that? 12 years, 13 years old, 13 years. And, um, you know, because of the Xeon processors and, uh, the, and the dual Xeon processors and upgrading the RAM like I did and running a SCSI uh, controller card, now she is still, I mean, she's not a rocket ship by no means, but she she's a great rendering machine. The Fire GL, the dual CPU, she's great for rendering. Um, when you take a scanned image, and we're talking about images that are three to six hundred megabytes, by the time we drop them in through our our uh, high-end scanner, if you did not have a workhorse computer, it, it would just choke. So anyway, she starts running XP Professional. It's, uh, there it is, XP. Let's see if I can get up close for you. Uh, maybe even zoom in a little. Yeah, bye bye. So we got our 30, yeah, she's not a 64-bit machine, but oh well. Let's get this out of the way. There's the Intel Dual. Uh, these are Prestonias. Xeons, they're 2.4 gigahertz. There's no way that I know of to overclock these CPUs that I've never really had to. Below that we have 4 gigs of, uh, this is ECC DDR RAM. The great thing about Xeons is you can run ECC RAM and that's just error correction, which means it's impossible, almost, uh, to have this machine crash and lose data. And when we were working it would, we're, you're talking about a lot of time if we had to rebuild stuff. And she never, ever, in, in the history that I had this computer, she never locked or crashed on me. So that's the motherboard, um, the graphics. She's, you notice how she looks like she's running two separate CPUs and Crossfire disabled. Currently, there's no way that I know of to enable it in this old of a legacy machine. I don't even think that the, the uh, Fire GL X1 was designed to have Crossfire. I think this is just a modern uh, spec uh, app. Confused as to what it's finding. And then there's the 33 gigs of Fujitsu's. At the time they were state-of-the-art drives. Extremely fast. Um, and then uh, that's the upgraded uh, DVD. And of course, Sound Max. So it looks like, I mean, wow, you know, excited. What does uh, CPU-Z say? I, you know, when I see that, I always think of uh, Z Nation. Great show. I catch it on Netflix. I mean, I don't, all right, what do we got here? I hope that doesn't look too weird for you. Maybe I can hang on while I try to drop this down so we get a direct view. There we go. Atta boy, cowboy. Alright, well, the chip is, uh, the chip, the Xeons, are, they're called Prestonias. They're a socket 604. And, um, you can see the core speed right down here. 2.392 or 2.4. Uh, Processor 1, and let's go to processor 2, you see nothing changes, they're identical. Cache is not big, that big of a deal on these chips, but they don't work, that's not where they get their power. That's the main board, 09N167. You know, I don't even know if I can upgrade the CPUs to something bigger. If anyone knows this board well uh, and gives me some pointers on that, that'd be, that'd be, that'd be so awesome. There's my four gigabytes of DDR, that's funny. CPU Z is like, okay, I have no idea what kind of chips these are, because they're ECC. Uh, which, you know, back then they were a lot of money. Oh, here's kind of a breakdown on um, 200 megahertz. They're actually uh, much, they're running much faster than that. So, I don't know what's going on with that. Yeah, each one is 200 megahertz. I don't know, because they're definitely faster than that. 
and that's the ATI Fire GL. Oh, this is the X1. I, I'm I am mistaken. It's the X2. So then, the original Fire GL was just called the Fire GL, not really the X series. I guess the X series was different. I know that there was a couple other cards prior to this one, but. Uh, I'll come back to a bench. I mean, do you guys really want to wait for uh, a a bench a, a bench check? All right, fine. Well, well, well. Interesting. Looks like we got a multi thread ratio of 1.74. Threads are four. So even though they're single core, they're dual thread per CPU with a total of four threads. Hmm. Well, the specs look rather shameful. But honestly, this is not a rocket ship machine. It wasn't ever meant to be a rocket ship uh, machine. This was, uh, she was a renderer and she, she did it faster than anything we could put together at the time. Very, very happy with it. Well, I'm ecstatic that she's back online. Like always, thanks for watching. Um, if you want to leave a comment, please do. And uh, if you have any pointers on CPUs for me on this, if I can upgrade to something larger, let me know. You guys out there, have a great day. Great life. See ya.